Hey, what is up everyone? It is Ridge. All right, I wasn't planning on doing another video today, but um, I saw in the comments section right when I uploaded the Jim Murray video uh, that George Perez passed away. And, uh, you know, my YouTube channel has kind of directed me in terms of the content that I provide. When I joined YouTube, I didn't really know what I was going to do. Um, I joined about seven years ago and just kind of felt it out and it's turned into this thing that I would have never imagined, like like in terms of the content that I provide. Um, and uh, I, I feel an obligation, I think, in some ways to really um, uh, celebrate comics. And, and Perez is incredibly important in the whole history of comics and so iconic. His stuff is so identifiable, um, is incredibly influential. And... You know, kind of like for, for me at least, when I picture DC Comics, I think that Perez really is incredibly iconic. I mean, it's it's just, it rem, it reminds me of like 70s, 80s comic style. And you see it in so many people's works. It, it, just getting the art together for this video. We've got some great, great pieces. So settle in. This will be a really nice tribute to him. I You know, it was kind of interesting too, is grabbing the images I was thinking of um, his art reminds me of Saturday morning when you're like a kid and you would turn on the cartoons and watch cartoons for a few hours. And then maybe if you were lucky enough, you know, you'd walk with your friends to the comic book store or, you know, your mom would take you or so something like that. But it's it was interesting. It really created a lot of nostalgia for me. So let's get into this. Rest in peace, George Price. He was only 67 years old. All things considered, that's quite young i mean the video that i did yesterday um bama lived to be 96 i think so man it's just a shame so let's get into this i i did pull up um a little bit of wikipedia i wanted to share this so this was my probably my very first george perez comics that i got um i didn't realize it was george perez until i was getting this video together but when i first started collecting i got these books and um I always liked them. It was funny because over years I would, um, you know, buy a lot of comics and then you have so many, you have to thin down your collection. I always kept these. I always kept them because I thought that they were so cool and his stuff was so detailed. But let me pull up the Wikipedia stuff really quick. So his early career, he did, um, I guess his, his professional debut was in Marvel Comics Astonishing Tales, which is always interesting. These Wikipedias are great, especially now where... We can hunt this stuff down online, but also, you know, obviously you can hit back issue bins and take your little wish list or comic book app and pop all this stuff in and, and grab them. But, uh, man, I'm telling you, like, it's just so crazy. So the other the other stuff that I had a lot of is I got a lot of his Wonder Woman book and I have a lot of the new Teen Titans and, and I have Crisis too. Um, uh, Superman, I mean, all this stuff. And then the War of the Gods Infinity Gauntlet, it's so iconic. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, this is how I, I, I saw this and went, wait a second. Now, I, I'm not 100% sure he did the interiors on that, so don't don't hold me to that. But, um, all right, let's get into the art. Again, I, I'm for people that are huge, huge fans, I like in my deepest sympathies because it, it does suck. It really sucks. Um, and, uh, man, it's brutal. So I went to Heritage. I wanted to look at original art. I wanted to look at art big and really enjoy it. He worked with a lot of different inkers um, and um, some really, really amazing, talented people. And I, I'm telling you, this video is loaded. If you're a Perez fan, this is going to be, like, insane. I think you're really going to have a lot of um, fun. And, and this will probably bring back a lot of nostalgia for you. It did for me... And I mean, I didn't start collecting until the early 90s. And just still, this this is what comic books, when I think of comic books, this is the type of stuff that I think of. It just sucks losing all these guys. It's just really, uh, uh, getting old sucks. <laughs> this, I have this comic for sure. I know I have this. I've seen this cover a million times. It was really interesting seeing it in black and white because I'm so used to seeing it in color and with the logo and stuff like that. And uh, you've seen it too, Kitty. Okay. Um, and uh, it's really cool seeing it in black and white, actually. I was, I was, I know. It's a good one in black and white, right? 
it's interesting. You can see through the ink and see that the the inker uh, originally it might may have been George think this, but um, you can see the ink lines um, were the web was done through the silhouetted figure. Yeah, it looks like he inked it. He did have some really really good inkers though. This was cool. Yeah, it's really really interesting to me because I you know I didn't collect really in the seventies and eighties a little bit in the I have some of the seventies stuff, but um. I really collect in the 80s, but I still have a nostalgia for it because it's just like, I guess it'd be like a kid growing up now and you like 80s music or something like that. This is 91, but um, yeah, there's just a, like a look and a vibe to it that uh, I really, really enjoy. I, if I was, if I was going to really have a huge comic book collection, it would be kind of from this era. A little before I really do like the Silver Age color covers though too. But yeah, getting this video together, I could see I could see this work in so many people's art. It was really it was really interesting. He it it's I know I know Phil Jimenez is influenced by Perez, but it's whenever you think of one of those books with like a million characters, like you think of the Perez style too. That's another thing that like this kind of stuff. This was for, I think, like the comic book legal defense fund or one of those kind of things. Um, I, I can't remember what it what it said. I mean, it says the press ar archives here, but it was it was done for something like a like a, a charity thing. This is cool. This is a little stretched out. Let me just um, the old scans on heritage. Um, have a weird uh, pixel ratio so unless you adjust them they'll they'll be a little stretched out this is really cool i love these um characters right here really cool yeah i have a bunch of these new teen titans i bought a collection off of a guy uh, maybe five years ago and there was tons of this stuff in there it's really cool. It's one of the funnest parts about when you buy a collection from someone is you end up with comics that you don't have. Like, that's always cool. This was great, too. God. Dude, this is, so, this is such a great piece. Oh, my God. This is so cool. Now, who in comics do you feel influenced George Perez? Do you do you know where um, his his influences come from? Man, this is so good. I always felt like if you worked in this style, you got a lot of practice drawing figures because, like. <laughs> <laughs> you do one or two pieces like this, you've drawn a lot of characters. <laughs> that means you had to create a ton of poses, draw in a lot of costumes, a lot of different foreshortening and hand positions. It's a it's a good workout. I remember these two. I have I nearly sure I have um, a copy of this, if not two, from from that collection that I just bought. In fact, he was clearly a big Perez fan. So I like this. This is cool. And, you know, again, seeing art like this, I'm sure for some people, you remember buying this comic, like, the day that it came out. I guarantee. It's it's just, you go, God, I remember freaking, I remember going to the comic shop that day and then picking that up. That's just, I don't know. It's interesting, when he signs, when he signs these pieces, he signs them in here. I think that that's, a, I've, I haven't seen that as a commonality of other artists. It's a good idea. Stan Lee to me is like uh, back e even years ago. He would sign in the worst spot sometimes. You'd see it and you'd go, "Oh God, Stan, over the face! Come on, dude." <laughs> this was great too. Look at this. She's so pretty, and her hair is great. Man, this is awesome. He's got a lot of the like real iconic like um, Kirby John Romita uh, senior like the Kirby the Kirby Crackle type stuff. I really like how he does it like the tighter version of it. I would assume Ron Lim was a big fan of this work. I was getting some Ron Lim vibes. This is a nice hawk, man. Wow, Photoshop could actually rotate it. That's rare. 
That's a nice upshot. Oh, I was I was do the um, Clip Studio shortcut now for taking it back to the the front. Oh, this is so good. I love looking at art like this. I really do. Oh, it's so good. Man. This was back in the day. Oh, I love this cover too. This was another one that I remembered. I definitely have this comic. And this was from my old, old collection. Oh, so I don't know. This is weird. I don't know why the signature is above Perez on this one. You can let me know if you know. It's signed by both of them. Maybe this person did the layout and Perez did like finishes over it. It looks like Perez's pencils to me. And if it's the ink and he signed above, I never understand that. Oh man, the background on the ground is so good. I would assume Arthur Adams was influenced by Perez. Oh my God, this is great. Let me um, I'm gonna uh, transform this a little bit. Let me just uh, grab it and then transform. It's a little stretched out. There was about maybe eight of them that got a little, a little pulled. This won't be perfect, but it won't be so elongated. Man, that is great. God dang, this is so much stuff to draw. I love the trees. Oh, sorry, I went a little too close. <laughs> How many characters are on this? Oh my god, I don't want to count them, it'll take too long, but there's a lot. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Yeah, god dang. This is great, too. What's what's great about Perez's work too is like he'll he'll like he'll have to draw a team shot and then he'll draw insets of characters like in circles or balloons like in this case, then he'll have people in the foreground, he'll have people in the background, and then he puts background behind all of that, and then like, stuff in the sky. Like there's very few artists that are this committed to like this level of of insanity. It almost I don't know like. Is Sergio Aragonis, is he this nuts? I know his stuff is much more cartoony, but I always picture Sergio packing packing a page pretty much. Look at this. This is great. Oh, man. This is so awesome. Oh, my God. Those fingernails are great. Kind of giving me a Walter Simonson vibe with the, um, the squareness of it. Just a touch. I know people have been requesting a Walter Simonson video, so I will get that together. Oh, this is a great piece. Man, this is cool. Yeah, this stuff kind of reminds me of like Saturday morning cartoons. You too, Kitty. You're too young to remember Saturday morning cartoons. So this is inked by Dick Giordano. That's cool. There's, um, I have, um, some stuff inked by Klaus Janssen over Perez. I don't know if I'll, I'll remember which pieces it was, but I thought that was kind of interesting. This is cool. It looks like marker up here. It's got a little bit of that sort of sharpie kind of blue. Man, these poses are great though. God dang. This is cool. A little zipatone. Zip a zipatone. What is it, kitty? Please. Just lay down. You're interrupting the video. This is cool. Oh man, look at this. This is crazy. I always ask, penny or no penny in your bat cave? You're drawing the bat cave. Is are you gonna have the penny and the dinosaur? This is nerd nerd talk. Some people don't like those. They don't want that in their bat cave. I do. I, I'm positive I would want that stuff. This is a great piece. Oh my gosh. And this is Senate. And I mean, it really is interesting because the Senate gives him, like, it doesn't look like Jack Kirby, but it definitely pulls it a little bit that direction. It's just pretty interesting to see. Oh my gosh. Man, that thing is great. 
<laughs> guns. They're so cool. Yeah, I think they were definitely going for like a curve. This is interesting. So this is the thing in Moon Knight. Oh, this is cool too. New Team Titans. This inker inked a lot of his stuff for a certain period. I saw his name on tons and tons of pieces. Really good inker too. It's real solid stuff. What's funny is I, I was watching a, a part of a video from David Finch yesterday, and he talked about... Oh, it was, um, it was a live inking demo with uh, Jimmy Reyes, and uh, they were he was talking about art returns, and I always um, picture this era for comic book artists, and it's it's like, I don't know where Perez lived at this time, but like he, he may have sent his pages into Marvel or DC, and then Marvel or DC would mail it to the inker, wherever the inker lived, and some, some of the inkers lived outside the United States. Then that person would ink it, then they would send it back to Marvel, and then eventually the art would be split up and then sent back to them. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> shipping art that many times uh to just send it to get work it's so funny look at this this is such a great piece man this is perfection it doesn't get better than this this is a really really nice cover man he knocked this out of the park wow and again this is just a lot of drawings Beautiful backgrounds, foliage, buildings, the whole nine yards. And Paris was so iconic. You really, I mean, but the thing is, is I think you, like if if you don't know Perez's stuff really well, I mean, I think you're getting the idea now how how iconic his stuff is. I mean, you can really spot a Perez piece out of a lineup quite quickly. Even I, I could probably walk up to an art dealer's booth and from 25 feet away, kind of visually spot. Perez art on a wall. I always think that that's a really good, um, a good quality to have as an artist. Like Bisley would stand out, Travis would stand out, Mignola would stand out. If you think think about what I'm saying here, because it really is true. Imagine being 35 feet away from an art dealer's booth as you're walking up. You're a row away, and you start to see the art on the wall. You could spot a Bernie Wrightson Frankenstein piece. You, you're getting you, you're getting excited about this idea, aren't you, Kitty? Okay, go go. Cat is crabby today. Um, but uh, yeah, I noticed that like years ago, and I went like, man, that's maybe an important thing to have your work be that ident identifiable from a distance. You know, that means your work is unique. You're doing something compositionally that that stands out, something uh, tonally that stands out. Maybe it's the way that you lay things out, the size relationships, the level of detail, and there's a lot of things that can can affect it. But I, I really do believe that Prez's stuff is quite identifiable. So I had forgot that he worked for CrossGen. He wrote and drew a book for CrossGen. I, I really um, didn't... I, I mean, I, kind of when I read it, I went like... This is interesting, too. So so these faces look like Chris Sprouse a little bit to me. And although this piece was not credited to Chris Sprouse, there was some stuff that he and Chris did together at a point. And I thought that that was interesting. So I don't know if... if Chris was influenced by Perez, or if Perez maybe uh, took a shine to Chris Sprouse's stuff, and um, uh, somehow the the mix kind of got in. This is awesome too, man! Look at this piece. God, man, this is such kick-ass stuff. Like I said, I don't know when I see this art. This is like I. This is what I picture comics to look like. I was saying with the Neil Adams video that it really kind of hit me between the eyes and I, I was like, it really made me question how, <laughs> question a lot of things about my um, perception of comics because it's obviously evolved a lot and in particular over the last like 10 or 15 years, like the way that people draw um, and, you know, the digital work and everything and uh, sometimes you've got to go back to the roots I actually really like the space on this. Like, like it's interesting. It almost looks like some of it is chipped off or the inker went back in and kind of blacked a little bit of it out. Oh my god, look at this piece. <laughs> Dude, that is so badass. Her name is Blackfire. She's Princess Coriander's sister. I'd hang out with either one of these two 
And this is Dick Giordano again. Man, that's so good. Man, that is awesome. And this is tight but loose. You know, I don't look at this and look at it as um, uh, unrefined. It's refined just enough, in fact, but nothing is is overly like sterile. Like look at the ink lines through here, and even this stuff. But he controls his line weights so well that nothing stands out. If you look at it like this, there's a really excellent ba balance of um, black, gray, and white, and so it reads tight. You know, tight but loose. That was one thing that I felt comics um, started to lose sight of um, in the 90s and early 2000s. Everybody wanted this like tighter and tighter look, and it was just like... I, I kind of fought it a little bit, to be honest. And I did for about 10 years. It was like... And it's not even out of a laziness thing. It's like... I just knew that there was other options that that I think kind of more, a little maybe more interesting. Some people really respond to that though, like they they want every single feather line to be like exactly the same. I mean, I I get that. Yeah, this is great. This is that old school inking style again. I wonder if this is in it. It doesn't say who inked it, but. This is interesting. It really, I guess the paper yellowed. Yeah, it's the glue. Sometimes the glue underneath the um, lettering will yellow it like this, is what I believe does it. This was awesome too, man. Look at this. God, that is great. The Soaring Sensational Sky Riding Silver Surfer. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, this is great too. These pieces are making me want to do a team shot. <laughs> that was what I said about Neil Adams. It was, it's funny that these artists do this to me. Because I said in the Neil Adams video that I've been kind of burnt on superheroes the last couple of years. And I'm really not sure what why it is. I equate it to just that I've been around superhero comics now for about 25 years. And so I, I like other things like fantasy. I like science fiction. So that that's a little more interesting to me now. When I see these guys draw superheroes, all of a sudden I kind of go... You know, I like superheroes again. So then I start looking at, is it that I don't like the stuff that's coming out now? Like, you know I mean? You try to put your finger on what it is. This stuff is just so classic. Look at all these different poses that he's got going on. This Robin hanging off of the fist is great. And then this, uh, Martian Manhunter is flying in right here. It's just insane. This is great. That's really cool. Shazam. Damn. But yeah, I see stuff like this, and I go, man, dude, look at the perspective shot on this. I mean, I, I saw it, but look down here. He's got total, like, he's got, like, a five-point perspective. <laughs> five-point curvilinear. <laughs> oh, my God. That is really crazy. That's, that, that is... I don't know if hard to do. I mean, I guess it is hard to do. Um, but, man, you really got to stay focused. This is great. This is, I think, my favorite piece that we've seen so far. And I have a lot that I like. But, man, this is nuts. Man, that is so kick-ass. Dude, I love I love how this, where, like, the buildings are literally, like, rolling over practically, like, upside down. God, that is great. I like this, too. And this is 1985, okay? Like to get a, a feel for for how the work evolves. This is Perez Penciler, Jerry Ordway Inc. You know, okay, I had a few of Ordway Inc. You know, Marv Wolfman. This is cool. These pieces reminded me of Dan Frega. It was funny is I inked Dan. It was one of the last inking jobs that I that I did actually. We worked on um, He Man Masters of the Multiverse together. I think Dan Dan's got some George Perez in his stuff. I know it's golden too, but uh, there was definitely there was pages that I saw and I went like, "That's funny, man." I see a lot of I I see I can see that Dan was into this for sure. A lot. I mean, it really this this era in particular really reminded me a lot of, of Dan's stuff. 
Man, this is crazy. I don't even know how you would pencil something like this. <laughs> Like, I guess you, I guess the, the inker, like, is probably, like, side of the pencil and kind of just, um, like, like, very softly put in, um, and then the inker went in and kind of, um, really defined it as more of a, a super detailed texture, but, man, that is nuts. This is cool, too. I think that what some of these are from a story. There was one complete like annual or something. So I grabbed about 12 or 13 pages from it um, that I thought were cool. And uh, these these are some of them. Yeah, this is great. You know, it's kind of weird because a few years ago, um, you know, most of you know I'm a huge music fan. We lost, like, Neil Peart, Eddie Van Halen died, and it was, like, a rough, rough couple of years. Chris Cornell, who was a huge um, idol of mine, because I was a singer. I talk a lot about guitar, but I was I was a singer in the last couple of bands I was in. Um, and uh, I was it was hard. I didn't realize how much I admired those guys and it took a long time. And then it's like, now we're losing a lot of like our comic book legends. And I'm just like, man, I can't take this. It's so, it's so frustrating. And I don't know if frustrating is the right word, but it's just a bummer. This is interesting. A little bit of pencil left. I was, it's funny because like on pages sometimes pencilers will do stuff like this I mean I think he's leaving this for the letterer possibly but um, yeah occasionally like pencilers will write stuff in like notes like they'll be like make sure the color blast is like a da 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 color I generally if I erase the page I erase the color note I've never really gone in and like wrote it in ink and I'll usually just and tell the editor in an email hey like panel 2 had this no note about this in case they forget this is nice this, this kind of does have a little bit of a Michael Golden vibe I'm sure it's more coincidental, or maybe Golden was a fan. I would imagine that when Michael Golden started drawing comics, most most professionals probably liked it. I can't imagine it wouldn't. This is great, man. This is so cool. I was always impressed by this kind of stuff too. Is is he he? This doesn't look overly like labored. These kind of backgrounds like this, um, and and there's a real casual quality of like line weight, which which I it's important but it it's it's um it doesn't look like he just took like one pen and did all the lines like it 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 doesn't here but he's he he's able to throw in just an occasional thick line here and there where it really matters like right here on this building you see just this one little heavy line that's all that really needs to separate itself from this building behind it and it's little cues like that really add up and in fact you see here he even went a little thicker on this line and, and even here now part of it is just instinct your just eye tells you this this doesn't stand out enough i need to like fiddle with it a little more um these shadows really help i mean it's a real subtle thing i, I doubt most people would spend too much time um looking at stuff like that look at this this is just sick ah oh, so good even this the inking here it's 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 really really professionally done but it looks casual and not overly labored to me but very clear could see a lot of 90s art being influenced by this to be honest whether they knew it that if they were getting it from Perez or if they were getting it from you know Image Comics or the Kubert brothers or whoever whoever it was that was funneling into this stuff this is great too oh, man this is so badass told you that I got a lot of good art we're probably only 50% of the way through with this video too so this will be a good one but yeah you know I I I feel like my YouTube channel has developed into this thing, and what the, the thing is is that we celebrate comics and comic art and the artists that produce it, all of them, and when we lose a legend, we lose anyone, we have to pay our respects. I, I think it's really important. So, you know, when you can expect from me to do these types of videos when we lose someone it's i feel like it's my my obligation is what what i built here 
This is great right here. Man. He really can draw. This is super detailed. Oh, I lost the face for a second. There it is. Oh, wait. Oh, I lost it again. Is there... So this is... Where's this guy's head? Oh, there it is. His face is right here. These are his eyes, and that's the, the bridge of his nose. It's hard to see. You saw it. You saw it, Kitty? Okay. Again, these are all from one story. So I grabbed a pretty decent chunk of them because they, they looked amazing. Oh, man, look at that. Nice hands. It's funny because the inking here has a little bit of like the Barry Windsor Smith vibe. This is cool. Marvel did so many of these types of books back in the day. Spotlights and two-in-ones and presents. Terry Austin on this one. Wow. The man. Oh boy, look at this. <laughs> I wonder how long these took for him to draw. <laughs> it's so, this is so much stuff to draw. I mean, seriously, you know, honestly, for people that are trying to learn, you know, these these types of pieces, I'm telling you, are, are not a bad idea to sort of cut your teeth on ideas like this. It, it won't be for everyone, but um, I mean, you know, you're going to get a lot of head practice in just, you know, God, how many screens are there? Twelve. Oh my god, they have all that. I guess probably twenty heads just on the screens. Yeah, see, and this is like this is interesting. Yeah. Oh man, this is cool too. He draws really pretty girls. Perez and Austin again. Man. It must have been fun to get all these legendary inkers to work on his stuff, too, you know? I mean, like, I'm sure the honor went both ways, but, uh... Those guys are no slouches, for sure. So this is the 200th issue of Justice League of America. This is it. The super-sized star set. <laughs> it's hard to say. So what is this? Oh, look at all the artists that worked on this book. So we've got Jim Aparo, Terry Austin, Brian Boland, Brett Breeding, Pat Broderick, Jerry Conway, Frank Giacoa, Dick Giordano, Carmen Infantino, Gil Kane, Joe Kubert, and George Perez. Man, that is a power-packed bunch of talent. Anyone get this off the newsstand the day that it came out? I bet that was an exciting morning or afternoon. She's pretty, too. Yeah, he just real, real cute girls. This was cool. 1987. Wow, that was a long time ago. Okay. Oh, this one's stretched. Let me uh, fix it for us. Yeah, Art Adams had to have been a fan of this stuff, right? Oh my god, look at this right here. This is so great. God, man, this is so nice. This pose on this character is really, really excellent. This Captain America is awesome too, actually. Yep, that is nice. Let me see one thing really quick. I just want to anticipate what we've got going on. Oh, okay, it's just a few left. All right, let me go back into full screen mode. 
Shoot, I, I was having so much fun, I honestly don't want to stop, to be honest. I think. Should have grabbed more. I was I was scared that it would be too, too long, but I know people's time is precious, so... Yeah, this has Art Adams vibes, too, to me. Oh, man, that beast is great. stretched out. Yeah, see, this was 2003 on Heritage. That's why their, their settings are kind of funky on this. This guy's funny. <laughs> it's like, we can't use Chewbacca, so we'll have this thing. <laughs> no. He's Ba Chuka. Wow, look at these guys. All oh, right, look at that. Oh yeah, this was the Beatles book. So this was interesting. I, I had never even seen this book until maybe about five or six months ago. And I was looking at um, the the whole series of these, um, I, I don't know, like I said, I always call them Mar Marvel treasury size things, but I, I know that they're not all that. But there's like Kiss and all these different ones that they did, even reprints of some of the old Marvel stuff. But I had seen this Beatles one and, and I didn't realize, so this is, I think this is George Perez and Klaus Janssen did this together, which is really, really neat. I only grabbed, like, two scans, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty wild. And then this is the, um, like, opening splash. Yeah, but illustrated by Perez and Klaus Janssen. They have the whole story on Heritage, I believe. Um, so if you're interested in seeing more of this, you could go to Heritage and the completed auctions and check it out. Really, really cool. And then I think we've got one more piece. Or is it a piece? Yeah, I think this is it, right? Uh, yeah, this is the last one. Let me go back and full screen. All right, well, rest in peace, George Perez. This is crappy news. I'm sure there's going to be a bazillion tributes. Um, and uh, I'll be following them all, checking all the different art, reading the stories and whatnot. But, man... Yeah, another legend gone. So, all right, you guys have a great day. Take it easy. Hopefully everyone has a happy Mother's Day. And uh, I'll be back Monday. Like I said, I wasn't really obviously expecting to do this video today, but um, I felt it was important. So um, take it easy. And then Monday um, we'll start a new influence chain. If you'd like to piggyback off of Perez's stuff, we could start a little before. If you want to recommend maybe someone that influenced George, um, we could return to George if there's a book or something that you want me to focus on and then um, follow who he influenced. I think it, it might be fun for next week is, is a I, idea if you guys are into it. So let me know what your thoughts are and uh, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.